Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I'm going to be jumping into the new battle ranking, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to get a stage level 200 clear. Now, the new battle ranking, Crime Scene Grudge Match, has two different fights, one against the Tonberry, the other against Elena. Now, I know that it's possible to get the stage level 200 on either of these fights. However, for me, I think that the Elena fight is going to be incrementally easier just based on the certain debuffs in the Tonberry fight, mainly the physical defense immunity, and there's one more there that was kind of a pain in the ass. That being said, let's jump over to the Elena fight right here, and I'm going to show you how I was able to do it. As you guys can see, stage level is set at 200, and the total bonus is 900%. My team is going to consist of Cloud as our primary fire DPS, Barret as our buffer and debuffer, and Aerith as our primary healer slash physical attack buffer. This team, honestly, feels like the perfect fit. Kind of like when you have those Legos when you're a kid and it's just like the perfect slotting one and it just like falls right into place. This team feels like what was meant to be cleared here. I mean, there's always something that's going to work better, at least for the most case. But for me, this felt pretty solid. Uh, it's still on the wire. My very first clear... Uh, my first clears are almost never recorded just because I keep losing typically a lot not like naturally gifted I, I lose a lot um, so normally I have to beat it a second time on a on a uh, on the actual clear for you guys and so I'll be voiceovering it my my run that I'll be voiceovering for you guys definitely has some mistakes in it and you'll see it comes down to the wire in that fight a couple different times uh, so that should go to show that there is some form of leniency depending on your build now that being said i'm going to quickly go over the actual team build here um, and i do want to make a note for you guys that i will be doing a top 100 score uh, i don't ever put these out on the very first day just because it's not really a great indicator of top 100. Like for example, my last battle ranking video, I put out like two days into it and I had to make another one by the end just because it fell out. Um, however, for my top 100, I think I will be using this team on Elena. For so, for, so for those of you who do want to try, I'm pretty sure I'll be running the same team. So that being said, my team here today is going to consist of Cloud running the Fire Arcanum, Hellfire, of course. We have Sky Splitter here at level 110, Stream Saber here in the second slot. Um, for his materials, we just have a Stat Stick Physical Attack Materia, Stat Stick Physical Attack Materia, and then a Circle Sigil Materia is going to be required. We are going to be breaking Elena's Sigil phase. So you are going to want three Circle Sigil Materias, one on each of your characters. All right. Now for Barret, I'm going to be running his Gear Voucher costume, HP and Physical Defense, Crimson Flare here. We have Assault Gun in the main hand. As long as you have this OB6, it'll hit high on the first cast. It's really going to make your life a lot easier trying to get that score level 200 clear now the electro uh, electro cannon here is really important in this fight for basically aoe debuffing the enemies and elena's physical attack because both of the starting enemies the sahagans are going to get a huge physical attack boost and essentially this is going to let you survive the length of the fight because we're going to be just targeting Elena the entire time. We're not worrying about the ads. We're going to kill the ads after killing Elena, meaning we're going to take essentially the maximum amount of damage in this fight. And so Barrett here is essentially doing a fantastic job of both mitigating the damage we're taking and lowering the damage of the enemy troops that we're fighting. Now for his materia, Bio in the main slot. I'm running Bio on Aerith and bear it just because if we jump in here and we look at elena she is not immune to it so for those of you who remember the uh turks crash fight 
neither of them were immune to bio and it was super clutch i don't put it on cloud because i don't want him wasting time doing the atv but it's nice because whenever they get an off chance i'm not really bioing myself in the fight as you'll see but it'll occasionally get put up by one of the auto by one of the other players with their uh ai which is kind of nice because it keeps her poisoned periodically throughout the fight other than that, now that we're on Elena, let's just take a quick look at her. She is going to be using powerful physical fire element attacks. So physical is the key component here. And we are going to be building to uh, ice resistance, although I'm not sure if actually she has ice attacks. Um, either way, I did build for ice resistance here because it's the opposite of fire. But please correct me if I'm wrong. If if that's not the case. I wish they actually showed the boss element so that we could properly defend against it down below. I feel like that'd be really nice. Um, so physical attack is going to increase and physical defense and magic defense decrease during attack style. So special note here, guys, we do not cast Crimson Flare slash Hellfire unless she is in attack style. Casting the summons while she's in defense style is a waste of the summons. It will drastically reduce your damage. She can also inflict confusion with fascination, but there's not much we can do about that. Just like pray to the gods that it wears off quick and doesn't affect anybody during the time when you really need them. It says magic attacks and physical attack up are effective against this enemy. Magic attacks aren't going to work because magic attack, magic percent damage gets debuffed at stage level 200 by 30%. So we are going with a physical attack cloud build. That being said, now that we've gone through Barrett over here, we're running Bio, Fire Breach right here since we have no Imperiler, and also a Circle Sigil Materia. Now last but not least, jumping over to Aerith right here, Aerith's going to be running her Comet Address. Healing Wind is important to bring. You do not need Breath of the Earth because Barrett is going to be taking care of Agitation right here. We are going to be running the birdhouse right here easier to say birdhouse right the birdhouse wand fairy tale i have tried with mithril rod fairy tale is better you do need the extra healing it works great bio in the first slot circle sigil materia like i said three one on each character and an aoe cura here i just spec that for the heal stat all right that being said let's jump into the back end for the builds right here for the characters here i have cloud strife himself 172k power 12.4k hp 5.2k physical attack he's got 105 physical defense and 110 magic defense and looking at his r abilities he's got hp at five physical attack at seven fire potency at six He's got uh, Flame Blade Arcanum. I did get his Ice Potency up. If Elena is not an Ice user and this does nothing, then Jess, don't worry about Ice Resistance and go completely for Physical Defense. All right? Physical Ability Potency at level 2 and Physical Attack to all allies at level 3. Now, for his sub-equips, we have the Radiant Edge here at OB5. We have the Glavinous Sword here at OB4 for the HP Physical Ability Potency and the bandage sword for the hp and ice resistance here now just so just for you guys that are thinking why not put glavinus in the main slot well if you go here and i click it it literally just increases my power does not change my stats in any way and i don't want cloud casting glavinus i want him using burning strike the entire fight he will not cast the stream saber so it's perfectly fine to put it in the back end i'm still getting physical attack completely uh, capped so it's totally good now let's jump over to barrett barrett it's here is sitting at 80k power 11.3k hp he's got 3k physical attack 174 defense being the key stat here on him 127 magic defense and some decent healing now he's got hp at level four he's got physical defense at four ice resist at five buff debuff extension here at level two but if you could get this level three it's going to make it a lot easier in this fight if we look at his sub weapons i have lucia's feather scatter hp physical defense the hellhouse cannon caller hellhouse caller hp physical defense and i have yuffie's arctic star for some physical attack and buff debuff extension right here now last but not least we have Aerith, the sweetheart herself 100k power, 11k HP. She's got 2200 magic attack, 118 physical defense, and 3.2k healing. Her R abilities will include level 5 HP, healing at level 10. Super important to get that heal stat up as much as possible, guys. 
We have some buff debuff extension at level 6. Super solid for her, just for keeping everything up. And uh, jumping into the sub weapons, we have the centipede here, OB10. We have the guard stick here. And I have the silver collar here at OB1. Silver collar gives a massive healing stat and buff debuff extension. It's essentially a carbon copy of the centipede. And so that's essentially what I'm focusing is healing to the utmost degree here. So yeah, guys, that being said, that is going to be my build going into the stage level 200 fight. All right, now that I've shown you guys, let's get into the fight itself. All right, guys, here we are going into the stage level 200 Elena fight. Now, I'm going to start this off. The nice thing about Barrett is he can get off the physical defense buff right before Elena gets off her first attack, which is honestly a huge difference between him and Matt in this fight, which is one thing that I really like, which reduces the overall HP down that you get on the top end right there, which is super cool. Now, essentially, this fight is pretty straightforward. We're not worrying about the ads whatsoever. With Barrett, I'm going to go Agitation, Energization, and then Agitation again before uh, before Elena gets off her next attack. Aerith is going to start the fight by doing Spiritual Harmony and then using Kiraga. And the goal is essentially just to get our physical defense buffed up as much as possible before Elena gets off this cross combo right here. All right, so here we go. We did get our physical defense up to low tier, which is solid, which is basically as much as you can do right there. As you can see, there is a little lag in this fight, but it's definitely better than the last battle ranking, at least for me, though I have heard of some people having still pretty horrendous lag. So my heart goes out to you guys. I hope it gets better. All right, so as right now, I'm basically anytime Elena has an attack buff up, we are reducing that attack as much as possible, all right? I typically just take it all the way down and then I just focus agitation because we really want to survive this fight all the way until the end. All right, and essentially that's the best thing that we can do by just casting agitation over and over. So here you'll see Cloud is pretty simple. He's just gonna attack the entire fight. So you don't really have to go to him too much unless you really wanna spam his attack. But at this point in time in the fight, this is a great time to do damage because she's in attack stance right now. So her physical defense and magic defense is kind of perma debuff. So essentially I'm just playing Aerith and Barret at this point, and we're just going back and forth. See, she physical attack buffed herself. Barret is just gonna break that physical attack. He's gonna keep the Sahagans completely debuffed. And then essentially Aerith is just spamming Kiraga, keeping up the attack buff up on the party. And essentially that is just how this fight plays out the entire time. There's no other real crazy mechanics in it. There is a sigil phase, but it's only a 14 point break. So it's not too gnarly. So as you guys can see right here, casting that physical attack buff up, went to cloud for the double cast right here. I'm gonna wait on Barret just a little bit, just to make sure that I get this physical defense buff off and it doesn't fall off before the end right here. All right, so we are gonna get that heal and that block right there. All right, so essentially if she targets Barret and I, I couldn't quite figure out how her targeting works, it does seem random guys. It could be based off total or current HP as opposed to total HP. But if you guys know how her targeting works, please let me know in the comments below so that this information can be shared with other players that can read your comment. All right, so right here, she's going for fascination. Uh, it's kind of a pain. It can make your character just not do what you want them to do. Uh, so it hit Barret, although we do need him to cast Agitation. Luckily, I think he does get it. No, he doesn't actually do anything right there. <laughs> he, he definitely got fascinated by her. So here's the Sigil break right here. But as you guys can see, Fascination wore off. We got the break. There is a bio on her. So like I said, they will get the bios off periodically, which will tick damage on her throughout time. All right, and this is going to be the point in time that we want to use the summons. Make sure you get your physical attack buff up and everything ready to go all right your heels up and then essentially when i'm ready to go i'm going to crimson flare and hellfire you're going to want to save your healing wins for important moments in the fight you'll see in this fight that i definitely need it when i use it so even though you can get that 1.25 times multiplier you are going to want to save uh healing wind for that rainy day moment all right, so we are getting Elena pretty much close to half HP by now. And essentially the fight is just going to continue. Our 
total damage reduction is almost down to half at this point. So by the end of this fight, guys, I think one of my characters has less than 2,000 total HP, which is pretty freaking crazy. It was really on the line. You'll see, and it gets really tough. Even after Elena dies, it's not over. The Sahagan Princes can kill you. So you just got to keep that in mind. But essentially right now, we're just trying to do as much damage as we possibly can. Elena is still in attack stance, so we're just trying to get off the, all the damage that we can do um, while keeping her debuffed along with the adds, everyone healed up, and keeping physical defense up on the party. It's a lot to take care of, but not as much uh, micromanagement in jumping between the characters as other battles have called for in the past, which is nice considering that these battles can be super laggy and the fact that you don't really have to play cloud makes it a little bit easier all right so there you go there was some lag right there triple clicking quadruple quintuple clicking the limit break all right but overall it's not so bad in this run which was fantastic and allowed me to actually get this guide out for you guys all right so jumped over here to cloud we do need to debuff her physical attack right here all right will he use agitation will he me i mean me will i use it all right so there you go like i said we needed to break the physical attack right there but essentially that's what you're looking out for i'm not really breaking it past neutral ground just because i really want to focus the agitations all right so as you can see i just get her down to neutral okay and yeah that's essentially what's going on um we are just going to be healing up right here we are going to take a hit from her right now make sure that you're getting off agitation before every single one of her attacks it's really going to help in the long run as you can see it got real close right here and i made some mistakes in this fight guys so it, it can be done with a little bit of leeway which is nice all right so as you can see here i jumped over to Aerith. very last moment there i kind of like blinked for a second and wasn't quite sure what to do but was able to pull it together in the end Aerith just struggling there at total 2400 hp here comes the cross combo cloud going for one burning strike i thought it was going to kill her it didn't and then so i just said screw it i'm dropping hellfire let's go i probably should have just dropped hellfire before in order to save myself some damage so if you get her down to like the 15% mark, 10, 15% mark, and you don't have Crimson Flare, just drop the Hellfire. Don't do what I did. I just took a ton of extra damage for no reason right there, right? You can see my Aerith is at negative 78% total HP reduction. And at this point in time, essentially we're just taking down the adds. And I thought, oh yeah, okay, this should be over. But actually it got pretty gnarly. Uh, the nice thing is I still had Crimson Flare, so I could buff up the fire potency of the party. But now that Elena's gone, it is definitely easier. I don't really recommend, I almost switched over to auto, and then I just thought second, I thought twice about that and figured, no, that's not a good idea. And I don't think it's a good idea. Make sure you clear this fight on manual to the end. It can hit you out of the dark and you definitely don't want to lose after going through all the effort of taking down Elena in the fight. All right, so here we go. Barret is going to be jumping agitation again. Essentially, once you get down to one of them, the, the biggest aspect of danger is mo more or less gone. Elena being the primary threat and two of them can definitely end up killing you if you make too many mistakes. But one of them, it's a lot harder for them to actually get that kind of jump on you. All right, so here we go. I accidentally casted Bio right there. So my second mistake in the fight. Okay, and but essentially I'm just trying to keep everyone's HP up. It can be hard. I casted Kiraga right there. Everyone was at full HP. So there's my third mistake in the fight, right? Sometimes it's hard for me to tell when everyone when their HP isn't full or is full, right? There you go, Aerith down to 190 minus 83% on the HP. Here comes the very, very clutch healing wind, all right, which is fantastic. And at this point, I'm just gonna get off agitation. We have the physical attack buff up. Cloud's gonna do one attack, and then we're gonna go straight into Hellfire after this second one right here. Okay, so we should be pretty good. I don't know if Hellfire is actually going to kill the Sahagan Prince right now, but I don't think it does actually. They're still pretty damn tanky, and at least with Barret doing the AOE physic, at least with Barret doing the AOE breaks, it lowers their damage to a degree that's actually manageable in this fight. 
but it's still a pretty hard fight. But I think that if you guys can more or less put this setup together, you can definitely make this happen. And if you're having trouble on the 200, just drop to the 180. I think it's a 100 crystal difference. It, it, you'll, you'll lose, you might lose 100 crystals, but at least you won't lose your sanity in the process of trying this over and over and over and over and over again. All right. So yeah, that being said, guys, that is going to conclude the stage level 200 fight. I don't know why my audio got messed up on this. I hope you guys don't mind the music that I layered over it. And yeah, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. As is my won't, if you guys have any questions regarding this fight about your team, just drop me a comment and I will help you out as best I can. If you have any complicated questions or more in-depth questions about the build, jump into our Discord. The link is in the description of all my videos. It's called the Curseborn Discord channel. We have a massively growing Ever Crisis community. We're about to break a thousand members, which is so awesome. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that's in the Discord and a part of the community. You guys are amazing and you guys honestly make Ever Crisis so much more fun to me. So thank you so much. Hope you all have a wonderful night. Take care and peace.